If you want to learn about the best tally lights for the ATEM switcher, then watch this video. Hey, Gary Cruz with AmazeStudios.com here. This is my ATEM Mini Rack setup, and today I'll be talking about tally lights for the ATEM Mini. Now I've been looking for a tally light solution for a while because in my past <laughs> live streams, I had issues with talent not looking at the right camera or my camera operators moving while it's live. And what tally lights do, it does a couple things. One, it lets you know when you're potentially coming up, which is in green, which is preview. And it also lets you know when it's live, when it's red. That lets not only the talent know, but it also lets the camera operator know. It's not really a big deal for camera operators on the PTZ side, but for mobile cameras, definitely, because those move around a lot. For using tally lights, we always had someone going, look at this camera, look at this camera, or looking at this camera just right off screen. And that just was not efficient or professional. So I did a little research on these tally lights and I found these tally lights by Tallymaw. And the way it works is that I have a, a little app here that runs on a Windows PC or Mac. In fact, I was running it on my laptop before, but I always had to have my laptop hooked up to the network. I have a little thumb PC in the back that just runs this software and that acts as the server software. It connects to my network and these tally lights also connect to the network wirelessly. So I have a built-in network on my, in my rack that broadcasts a SSID called MA Studios for everything that I'm gonna to use to control my live stream unit. The benefit of that is that if I'm not on a general network, let's say at a school, I don't have any other traffic that's gonna be interfering with what I need to do to do my live streams. So with that said, it's pretty easy to set up. You can see it's quick. So each time I press one of these buttons, I have four of them. So four is in my internal rack here. I don't really use a fourth camera, but I have it just in case. The Canon has a built-in tally light. Now keep in mind, when I'm using this for the tally lights, this is not going to trigger the Canon PTZ cameras. I'm using a Scarhoy controller that is actually triggering the tally light on the Canon CRN 500. Before I figured that out, I was using the tally mall lights. And the benefit of using the tally mall lights is that it also has preview. So you notice when that one is green, there is no green tally on the CRN 500, but there is a red on air tally. And that matters when you know, if you wanna know when they're going live. And if you take a look at it, it's pretty instantaneous. The tally lights on the CRN 500 are being triggered through the ethernet cable, through the protocol, but these tally mall lights are wireless. Speaking of Wi-Fi, I have a new GL iNet router that's gonna replace the older barrel one that I have in this rack. It's gonna be Wi-Fi 6, but keep in mind that these tally lights require a 2.4 gigahertz. So there's two channels on these routers. It's the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz, and these are going over the 2.4 gigahertz. This is not sponsored. I just wanted to get a faster router and I wanted to see how this works in my rack. So keep an eye on my YouTube channel for that. And if that's something of interest, definitely hit like and subscribe. One con is that the threads on the bottom of these are 3D printed, so the threads are part of the 3D print. There is brass inserts that you could put and melt into the 3D print so they can last a little bit longer. That would be the only feedback that I would have for these units. They're very bright, you can change the colors, there's RGB, but I keep it simple. I use red and green and it's white when it's not connected and it's purple when you need to set it up. You'll see that initially, and the setup is super easy. The instructions are online if you wanna check it out. It'll literally take you less than five minutes to set up. And once you have it set up, every time you turn on your rack, it's ready to go, right? So I'll just give you an example right here. Let me turn off my rack and then turn it back on. When you first turn it on, you'll see that these are all white, showing that there is no connection. Uh, it will connect to the Wi-Fi once it gets the signal, but then the next thing it's looking for is the server software. I have the PC automatically booting on Power Restore, and that is done in the BIOS. It's a little thumb, dry, uh, thumb PC. Also, the PTZ cameras are being powered over Ethernet. And then you can see that it's initializing the cameras. 
I have it so that when the PC restarts, it also runs the command to run the server software for the tally lights. And that's also part of the install when you download it. When you first get these, the first thing you need to do is plug one in at at a time, and then you'll connect to its own Wi-Fi where you can then set up the Wi-Fi that it needs to connect to. So just like when you set up a, a smart device, like a ring, it, you connect to the local device first, and then you select the Wi-Fi that you want to connect it to, which is my internal router. Oh man, why does it decide to update now? It looks like Windows is trying to update, and I should probably turn that off because on a reboot, on a live set, I don't want Windows to update. <laughs> Let alone, I, I don't want my rack to have to reboot randomly. Uh, luckily, that hasn't happened. So that's probably one of the cons. I'm not very familiar with Windows. I probably want to switch that out for some sort of Mac Mini to run on the back end, or something even faster than the thumb PCs that I'm using right now. It's relatively inexpensive. It was like under 200 bucks to buy. And if you're interested in any of these products, definitely hit the description in the video below. All right, so Windows is starting. While that's starting, that's another benefit of this Scarhoy controller, is that there is no PC that I have to wait for. And once it gets power, it's ready to go. And I'm going to do a separate video on the Scarhoy, but I really love it. At first, I was just using it as a really fancy PTZ controller. But what I've learned is not only does it control my cameras, but it also has ATEM control. So, for example, it'll show the tally lights, as I mentioned, on top of the cameras, but also showed the status on the Scarhoy controller itself. So you can see that number two is selected and it also says cam two on here. And I can, I can cut between the two cameras. Working on updates, 95% complete. So Windows is now auto booting and I also have it set to auto login so I don't have to put in a password. That reduces the amount of time that I have to reboot. And I should definitely get a faster computer because the SSD in this is also very slow. Not only the, S the SSD is slow, the CPU is slow as well. But again, these tally lights don't require a lot of power. So once Windows is booted up, it's going to auto load the server software. If you get a mini PC for your rack, I also recommend a tiny keyboard. So this keyboard is from RII or R2, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And it's, before I was using a full size keyboard, this is easy to pack and it's got good range and it's just ergonomically big enough to be useful for little things that you have to do here. So this just booted and once the software is booted, I can then start to switch between the two and you can see that it's pretty instantaneous along with the tally lights on the Canon cameras. So there we go, tally lights for the ATEM. Really easy to set up. I just, oh, here, let me just show you, show you some details here. I'll take this one off. So the way I have these connected is there is a threaded bolt on the bottom. Again, that is part of this 3D printed case. The other, I guess, a little piece of feedback is that these look like it's gonna peel off over time, which are the labels for each of the tally lights that they send you. However, I'm gonna replace those with my own labels, which is not a big problem. And you should get a, a USB cable, which is the micro USB, so that it fits snugly in there and get the appropriate length. So this one looks like it's about uh, two feet, two feet long. This plugs into my FX line in the back. And then I have this connected to a, I think this is a small rig, but really what it does, it connects this to my rod. So I can, I have that for both, uh, for all three cameras. And I have a pretty similar rod setup for each of my cameras here. So to put that on, I'll just screw this onto the rod and then I'll plug it into the back of my FX line. And then once this boots, it'll connect. And I'll click, click on camera three and I cut. There we go on that one. Okay, now that you saw how those are connected, that's how I connect it to all three cameras. And I, if I need to connect to the fourth one, I can do that as well. And they just go right on the rails. 
So I highly recommend you do that because you want to put it as close as to, to the lens as possible. If they're further away, it doesn't really matter because really what they should be looking at is the lens, not the lights. I also sometimes mount this in another location. I'll show some B-roll of if it doesn't really matter if the talent is looking for the red light, but the camera operator is checking if they're live or not. That's where I'll mount it somewhere else where it's more visible to the camera operator. The other thing too, what I like about this design, one pro I like is the design of the way the light is. It's pretty much 360. So uh, let's take a look at this. The light, the LED light goes all around. So a lot of the other solutions I've seen only have the tally light in the front or have some sort of big bulbous looking light and it's not very attractive. I like the sleek design here. And there's options where you can say, oh, show the light only in the front half or show the light in the back portion for the operator to look at. So there are options that you can do to set the lights. All right, that really covers the review of these Tally Maw Tally Lights for the ATEM. It works not only just for the Blackmagic products, but there's also switchers that it works with like VMix. Just check out the Tally Dash Maw website. This is not a sponsored video in any way. This is something I did my own research and bought with my own money. And I really like them. I've been using them for a few months now. So I highly recommend these Tally Maw lights for one, they're really easy to set up. Two, they work over the Wi-Fi network. And then they also have a cloud option if you're too far away from the Wi-Fi network, you can use it over the cloud. I haven't used that yet because most venues that I use have enough coverage with my Wi-Fi to switch these out. In fact, uh, I haven't had any problems connecting these to my Wi-Fi network, and I'll show you some examples in my B-roll. Number two, I like the design. It's nice and sleek. It mounts very easily to my camera using the standard mounts that I use for my camera rail system. I know I mentioned that not having batteries could be a con, but in a way, the positive end is that if you're using these V-mount batteries, which has a USB port on them, they can power them basically for the whole gig. I've never had batteries run out on these using my V-mount batteries by FX Lion. If you're new to my website, definitely consider subscribing. I talk about live streaming gear on my Instagram channel. I show more up to date behind the scenes of how I use this gear. All this is bought with my own money, so none of this is sponsored. And I just wanted to share a really good system for tally lights for the ATEM Mini Extreme. If you like what you see, definitely hit like and subscribe on the way out. Thanks for watching.